Hey everyone, Roger from Ask Car Experts YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing a set of sport brakes on a BMW G30 5 Series. Going to be doing front and rear, so this video may be front or it may be rear because I'm going to use the intro for both. But I'm going to do them separate in case you're just interested in front and just interested in rear. As always, I always include torque specs and great tips and tricks to get the job done as fast and easily as possible. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe and please hit that like because it helps me a lot. Thanks everyone. This is gonna be fun, let's get started. I'm sure you know how to lift the car, but there are lift pads on a BMW. And for the front axle, it's good to lift up both sides. And I got this side too. Lifting up both sides allows you to turn the wheel while you're working so that you get a better angle and access to the caliper. Always use a jack stand for safety. 17 millimeter for the lugs. All right, here we go. Look at all the lovely brake dust. Now we know why these brakes stop so great. All right, first thing to do, in my opinion, is let's get rid of some of this brake dust and make this caliper shine again. There we go, that's so much nicer. You can't do a brake job and just leave everything full of brake dust, especially not on this beautiful M caliper. You're gonna to wanna to use a four millimeter punch. We have to punch out the slide pins first. Now, when you tap these out, the spring pressure can make them come down slightly. So you have to alleviate the spring pressure by pushing on it and then pulling the retaining pin out. So we're gonna just use some vice grips on the end just so we have a little bit of leverage and then push on the spring to work this out. All right, so we are not gonna use a special tool for this, we're just gonna use two screwdrivers. So you wanna catch the rotor on the bottom and go ahead and use the existing pad to push the caliper piston out. Make sure when you're doing this, you don't have the other side apart as well, because all you'll end up doing is having the pistons fall out of the caliper. Do one side at a time. And then we're gonna hold the other side and then again, push outward. Slide it in. And push outwards, yep, taking out the retaining clip. Now at this point, you can see you push on one side, the pistons actually will push out. So you have to hold both sides at the same time now and go ahead and just push outwards to have them both retract and then you'll be good to go. Good. All right, now that that's all opened up, we're ready to go. One thing to keep in mind when you're doing brakes, you have to make sure that your brake fluid is not gonna overflow. We're already at the max point here, so we're probably gonna have to take some out before we continue for the other side. For this side, it's fine, but you wanna monitor this. If this spills out, brake fluid can damage your paint and get into your driveway and makes a mess. Some M brakes come with adhesive on the back of the plates. This vehicle actually does have the adhesive. Sometimes the adhesive is so strong that you can't pop them out. And you can see here's the adhesive right here. Now on these brakes, they did come off relatively easy. If you can't separate them, you can actually take the whole caliper off and then you can access it and pry that uh, pad off a little bit easier. But this is really, if you were just doing pads, you can see that one's a little bit more stuck. If you're just doing pads, then this would be the procedure that you need to do. We need to do rotors because these rotors are shot. We have a really high lip and they're below minimum specification. All right, we're gonna get the brake sensor out of the way. You can see it goes into the slot right there. There's a holder there. Comes up along here. There's a couple of hooks and then pops off at another bracket there, all the way up here. Then it just goes to this box. And you just have little tabs that you pry out. 
take it out and then there's two press tabs on the side and it'll pop right off. Sometimes the clip can get stuck so just gently pry underneath for the locking tab so that you can separate this connection. There it is. Behind here there's an E18 right here and there's another E18 down the bottom. So we're just going to use our impact and take these two E18s off and we'll be able to go ahead and remove the entire caliper. Ty and say hi to everybody. Here's a quick pro tip. Take some rags, throw it over your rotor and the backing plate because we're going to rest the caliper on top there. You don't want to scratch your paint on your beautiful M calipers. All right, E18. All right, this gives you access to the pad, so now you can use the bottom to go ahead and push that out. And this is where it was stuck to the caliper pistons right there, you can see. Now that we have the caliper in this position right here, if you have the glue on brake pads, you want to remove the glue from the pistons on both sides. You can use an adhesive remover, some glass cleaner, whatever you have on hand. and right here this surface here and this surface here and on the opposite side here and here is all unpainted surfaces and that's where the the pad sits so you're going to want to clean that with some scotch brite we're going to go ahead and clean that up and then i'll show you what it looks like when we're done spray a little bit of brake cleaner and remove the adhesive tiny piece of scotch brite also works good Spray with a little bit of the cleaner and go ahead and gently rub to remove the adhesive. You want this uh, nice and clean and dry because we have to stick the new pads onto this brake caliper. Scotch bright on the two sides on each side of the caliper. So all of these surfaces are nice and clean and that was just done using some scotch bright. Now it's on to removing the rotor itself. Six millimeter Allen to remove the holder for the brake rotor. Retaining, a lot of times you can just give it a tap. Now sometimes these can actually be stuck and seized. If that does happen, you need to do, use an impact driver. Now I have to say the Snap-on impact driver is one of the best ones that I've ever used. Impact driver basically is you're gonna hit it with a hammer, so you're gonna turn it in the direction you wanna go. You can see right here, there's an arrow, so you wanna hold it in that direction and then hit the backside and it shocks it and breaks it free. And you can really hammer on it quite a bit if these are stuck. Another quick trick is you have to put the caliper back on, hold it with a screwdriver in between the caliper so that you know it can't rotate. And then you can use a T45 and you hammer that into the rounded off Allen. And it's just the right size and then you have another a lot more biting surface and that a lot of times using the impact driver and that you can get it out and then again worst case scenario you actually have to smash the rotor off and then you can get it out another quick trick is you have to put the caliper back on hold it with a screwdriver in between the caliper so that you know it can't rotate and then you can use a t45 and you hammer that into the rounded off allen and it's just the right size and then you have another a lot more biting surface and that a lot of times using the impact driver and that you can get it out and then again worst case scenario you actually have to smash the rotor off and then you can get it out take a wire brush and let's clean up the mating surface really really good when you have your parts make sure that you have the left and the right. All right, everyone, round three of the rotor. So we found out that I actually had the wrong part number rotor. There we go. Now it fits over the, the hub correctly. So my parts guy, he actually built out the right rotor, but then gave me the wrong one. 
So if it doesn't fit over the hub correctly, it's wrong and double check part of them. Now remember you need left and a right. This is the left side and this was 16 newton meters. So we're finally back on track after doing a quick run to get the correct parts. The caliper bracket screws are 130 newton meters. So you wanna put the caliper bracket back on before you install the brake pads. Using an extension, you want to torque these to about 130 newton meters. All right, putting the pads in, we're going to slide them in and not stick them right away. So we want to keep it close to the rotor. Just tap them in. Take a second and clean up the sliding pins just with some scotch brite. Clean off the spring retainer also. Just try to remove as much of the brake dust as you can. Slide the pin in. Set up your spring retainer, which remember goes right through right here. And just get them started. Okay, so this is gonna be loose here. Yep. Tap that one in. Get the bottom started. You have to compress the spring to get it into the slot at this point. And then across to the other side. And once you're lined up, you can go ahead and Tap them into place. They protrude just a tiny bit, so you want to make sure that they're fully in. You can see right here, they're in the spring retainer correctly, and that should be all set for that. So now at this point, you're just going to press on the brake pedal, and that's going to glue the pistons. Now go ahead and install your sensor. See, so it goes into that slot right there. Tuck that in behind, and that goes into the pad. You use a screwdriver, just lock it in. Okay, then you route it. The routing is pretty self-explanatory. Underneath. All right, you have a holder right there, and then it's under both retainers here. And then there's gonna be another hole down right over here to hook it to, and then up to the box. Another retainer here. And then go ahead and lock it in. Put it in the protection box right there and then close it up. Sport brakes, not too hard to do. Just follow all the steps involved. Tightening torques, it's all there. On the other side, it's even easier because you don't have to worry about the sensor. Quick side note, you do not use BMW brake paste on the sliders for this. They have a special coating right here, so there's no need. Even on the rear pads, same thing. It has a special coating on it. You do not apply the BMW brake paste. Just like magic, the other side's done. Went much faster when you're not recording. But I do that for you guys. Thanks for watching everyone. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys soon. And if you wanna check out how to do the rear brakes, that's gonna be on next week's video.